Okay, so welcome to College Algebra. Last time we were talking about um, polynomials. <clears throat> we're still talking about polynomials. So today is the 31st. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> So, uh, for example, just so we can talk about, to recap of what we did last time. So here's an example of a polynomial. So how about 4x uh, minus uh, 3x squared uh, minus 5x cubed plus 2x minus 8. So here's a polynomial. Okay, then we, we had to introduce some, <coughs> some words so that we could understand what each of these mean. So each one of these parts there's a name for each one of these. Each one of these pieces is called a what? A term. Okay, the, the reason for that is that um, in the study of languages, the process of taking a, a written bit of language and trying to understand it, uh, that's called parsing. And when you're parsing, you create something called a terminal, which means that's where, that's where parsing stops momentarily. And these are, these are terminal bits of the parse. So term is short for terminal. Okay, <clears throat> so terms. Then each one of these bits, that one, well, really, that one, that one, that one, and that one, each of those had a name. What are those called? Coefficients. Yes? Yes, it is. I just, thank you. <laughs> So these are called coefficients. <clears throat> okay. Then there's an exponent for this one, but it's not written, it's only implied. What is the implied exponent? One. And then this exponent is two, and that exponent is three. What's the name that we gave to all of those? Degrees, right? So degrees. Etc. So, what is, by the way, what is the degree of this one? Yes. Okay. So now, for every polynomial, we um, we said, okay, well, there's a standard way to write a polynomial. So, and we called that standard form. Is this, is this polynomial that I've given you written in standard form? No. No, it is not. What requirements must be met to be written in standard form? Okay. Collected. So, all, so what, is it, what is the criteria that, that deems terms as being similar? Uh, the degree being the same. So, when, when degrees are the same, terms can be collected. So here, here's a 4x. Are there any other terms? And, and what's the degree of this one? One. one. Are there any other degree one terms? Yes. Yeah, there's this one, right? So this is not collected. So we'll collect. So I'll collect these together. So I can see 4x and 2x, well that's 6x. And then minus 3x squared, minus 5x cubed, and then minus 8. So are the terms collected now? Yes. Is this standard form? No. 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 What, ha, in what way is this not standard form? Standard form also requires them to be in the descending order of degree. Descending order of degree, which is kind of a 
fanciful way to say write the highest degree terms first. Okay, so then it would be negative 5x cubed. Uh, and then what's the next one? Minus 3x squared. And then plus 6x. And then minus 8. So this is kind of a recap of what we said at the end of last time. So any question about this? <coughs> okay. So the next thing <coughs> is that we need some formulas for, for multiplying uh, these things out. So <coughs> the first uh, piece of jargon, uh, so we need a bit of jargon here. is that uh, polynomials with exactly two terms are called what? Who knows? Binomials. And generally speaking, expressions that contain two terms are called binomials. So an example would be something like you know, x plus 7. That's a binomial. <coughs> so, <coughs> here we have a proposition. We'll call this proposition the product of binomials. So that is to say, a plus b multiplied by c plus d where the A's and B's and C's are standing in for things that could have various powers of X associated with them. Okay. So how, there's an acronym that goes, that goes with this that if you've taken an algebra class before, you certainly heard it. So what is it? FOIL. Okay. So this is, the, the product of this is, will be AC. Uh, plus AD plus BC uh, yes plus BC plus BD so that's if you carry this out you distribute twice to do this so these terms these four terms each have an initial associated with them so this one's called the F term this one the O term, this one the I term, and this one the L term. Okay, and that's why this is called FOIL. So now, there's four terms, four terms, and then when within each term, this term has two pieces, an A and a C. So this, and this is a product. So when you have things separated by plus, those things are called terms. When you have things separated by product, a and C product, then what are these called? What is A and what is C? Starts with an F. Ends with actor. Ah, uh, factor. <laughs> it's a factor, right? So each one of these terms cons consists of, each one of these four terms consists of two factors. So look at these two factors and look at this left hand side. So considering just this binomial, which term is first? A, and considering just this binomial, which term is first? C. C, right. So then this first one, the F term, is the first ones, A and C. Okay. So this stands for first. It's called first. Don't worry, we'll speed up. But first I have to go slow through the, through the details. So A, C. Okay, so then now... <coughs> Uh, the outside terms, outside. So now, considering this product and this specific binomial, which one is outside? A. A and this one, which one is outside? D. D right? A is outside and D is outside. So, Etc. So I think you can probably figure out 
the rest from this much, so this is inside and last. If I draw too many more arrows, then it becomes, may become unintelligible. <laughs> okay, so any question about this formula? So let's use it. So for example, how about, how about 3x plus 5 multiplied by uh, 2x plus 9? Okay, so then I'll do this, since this is the first time I'm doing it for you, um, I'll do it in excruciating detail. So the first term would have factors 3x and 2x, so that's f, plus the next one would have factors 3x and 9, plus the next term would have factors 5 and 2x, and then plus the last term, the L term, would have factors 5 and 9. So is there any question about how these individual pieces substitute into the formula in this way? So normally when students do this, they don't, they don't write this step, right? Usually the first thing that they write is something like, okay, in your head, what is 3x times 2x? 6x Six Six squared. Six squared, right? Because that 2 can commute to the front and combine with the 3 to make a 6, and then you have x times x, which is x squared. x squared. So this first term would be 6x squared. And then plus, how about this term? 27x. 27x. The next term? 10x. 10x. Uh, 10x. The next term? 45. 45. So most students, most students start right here, and that's fine. It's fine. So is this written in standard form? No. no. What is not standard about it? It's written in descending order of degree. Ah, but it's not collected. Okay. 6x squared plus 37x plus 45. Any question about this one? This one is okay? Okay. So that's product of binomials <coughs> using FOIL. Okay, let's do the next thing. <coughs> so proposition. Now this is going to be the square of a binomial. And this is a special <coughs> case this is a special case of the product of binomials because when you square something, that's product with itself. So it's still the product of binomials. However, both, both of the binomials are the same. So a plus b squared, this is what we need a formula for this. <coughs> okay, so then most students, at least the very first, the very first time you go through algebra, most students believe that the answer should be a squared plus b squared. <coughs> Presumably because you might think, oh well, you square the a, you square the b, the two, just like that. But this is not right. Yes. If you were to FOIL, if you were to do FOIL, you'd get a, when you do the o term, you'd get an ab, and when you do the i term, you'd get an ab. So you get plus 2ab. So this thing I'm writing in red is the term that is most co commonly left out by students, in my experience. Yes? So 
So, there's a, so let me rephrase your question slightly. Um, on the first page, I gave a polynomial. How many letters were in it? One, one letter, right? Just x's. So then when there's just one letter in it, we have a definition for what standard form means. So now, in the, now to rephrase your question, I, I would say maybe you're saying this. I see that there's two letters. What, what is standard form then? Uh, the answer is that there is, there is a standard form when, when there's an arbitrary number of letters, but we don't talk about it in this class. So, so long as, if there's multiple letters in the expression, so long as things are collected, it's fine. <coughs> but for those of you that, you know, just really want to know, there is, there is a standard form when you have an expression consisting of a million letters. There is one. Okay. <coughs> but, but we let, we generally leave that to the realm of machines. We just tell machines how to do it and they do it. Okay. <coughs> so for example, uh, how about 2x plus 7 squared? Okay, so just use the formula, right? So, but, but I'm going to make some mistakes, actually. So how about, how about 2x squared plus 7 squared plus 2, 2x, 7? <laughs> there's, there's all kinds of problems with this. <laughs> So let's focus on the first thing. <laughs> What's wrong with the first thing? It should be 4x squared. It should be 4x squared. <coughs> okay. Okay, because it'll be 2x times 2x. Right? So, so, what's wrong with this one? I don't know what it is. First of all, first of all, you should multiply the 2x times 7 and get 14x. Okay. So let me let, so remember how I said this, right? It's two a b. However, because of the conventions, the way we write numbers, if you if you write this down real quick and then have a, you know, lose your focus for just a moment, you might say, okay, now it's twenty two times seven, right? So the way that you fix this kind of error and you always always do the right thing is every time you substitute something into a formula, every time you substitute something into a formula, parenthesize it. So parenthesize this one, parenthesize that one, parenthesize that one, parenthesize that one. If you always parenthesize what you substitute into a formula, you will never be in danger of doing the wrong thing. Even, even if you momentarily lose focus, a cosmic ray passes through your brain for a minute, or someone coughs, or whatever, <laughs> okay, you, you can always come back and you won't lose track. Okay, so any question about that? So now, the instructions, if I was to ask such a question, the instructions would, would include something like, and I want you to multiply it out and collect like terms and everything else. So, so how about for this one? Right, 4x squared, and then this one, plus 49, and then this one, 28x. So is this in standard form? No. Why is it not in standard form? It's not in descending order of degree. So 4x squared plus 28x plus 49. So now, many students catch on to this, and they, they notice that when you're doing things that look like this, when, it's, when there's just one x like that, the 2ab always goes in the middle. Okay, so if you... If you, when you notice that pattern, then you'll start to put the 2ab in the middle. But I'll just 
I'll just remark about that. Okay, any question about this? <coughs> Square of a binomial? Yes? Did you just do um, parentheses 2x plus 7 times 2x plus 7 and then, and then uh, do FOIL that way? Yes, you could just do FOIL and you could forget this formula altogether. <laughs> this formula is a consequence of FOIL. So you're going to get the same answers both ways every time? You must. Yeah. <coughs> Other questions? Okay, how about one more of these? How about 3w plus uh, 5z squared? This pencil is showing up pretty good on the screen, huh? Yeah. Okay. I'll keep using it. This is, this, this is a 2.0 millimeter pencil. It's unlikely to break. Most people write with 0.7 millimeter. So this is three times as, the reason, y'all weren't in the, the other, it, during the other class la on Monday, I broke my pencil. It was unbelievable. <laughs> no, it, I didn't break the lead. Okay, I literally just broke the pencil. <laughs> Apparently I was writing really hard. Yeah, I was excited. Okay, so, so, uh, this would be, 3w squared plus 5z squared plus 2 3w 5z. So any question about how, how the formula was invoked? Okay, so now let's just carry this out. So then this would be 9w squared. And then what? Plus 5z squared. Uh, no, 25 I mean to say. 25z squared, and then plus how much? 30wz. 30 <coughs> Any question about this one? <coughs> this is okay? Okay, next thing. Uh, so, proposition. So now a minus b squared. So this is in comparison to the previous page. And in comparison to the previous page, we were talking about a plus b squared. So now the formula is quite similar, <coughs> but it is different. So what's the formula? So let's think about it. What would be, what would be the first in FOIL? What would be first? A squared. And then what would be the lasts? It'd be, yeah, you'd have negative b squared multiplied by negative b squared. So, I'm oh, sorry. You'd have negative b multiplied by negative b, which is what? B squared. B squared. So you'd get, a, you'd get plus b squared. And we're still going to get 2ab, just like the previous formula, except what's the distinction? Minus. <coughs> so can you see the similarities and differences? Okay, good. <coughs> so then one of these is in order. So for example, <coughs> how about um, 3z minus uh, how about 4p? That'd be nice. Uh, and then square it. Okay, so then just follow your nose, 3z squared plus 4p squared minus 2 times 3z times 4p. Any question about how the 
formula was invoked. <coughs> okay. So uh, the first term when when you carry this out is what? 9z squared, and the next term? Good, and then the last term? Very good. Any question about this one? So here I'd like to remark about something, and I'll say this a lot throughout the semester. So whenever I, whenever I read my instructor evaluations, I always, I, I always get two comments. I get a lot of comments, but these two are, are quite common. So one of them is, I really like the way he shows all the steps. Okay? And the other one is, is he just writes too much during, during lecture. It's just too much. <laughs> it's, just, it's just too much. Okay? So another, another remark that's not usually made, but I'll make it, is that um, I usually make fairly few errors when I'm writing. But, and when I do, it's usually really obvious what happened. Like I just wrote, wrote a, I, I meant to write six, but I wrote anything else but six. So something really obvious. So why is it that I make no errors? Is there something intrinsically special about me? No, there is not. Okay, is it, maybe this pencil, maybe this is the secret. Is it the pencil? No, it's not the pencil. <coughs> Why is it that I make few errors and the errors that I make are obvious? Because I show my work. Because honestly, I'm not really thinking very hard about this. The notation is designed, okay, the notation and methods are designed so that the next step is always obvious. So what I'm going to encourage you to do is the following. So admit to yourself that your purpose at least one of your purposes, is to maximize your grade in this class. So, so can we all agree on that? Okay. Now, you have, to, you have to think, what am I willing to pay for that? Okay, already you're paying money <laughs> to be here. And what I'm telling you is that you, I encourage you also to pay in pencil lead and pencil strokes. If you'll just show your work to the same degree that I'm showing my work, you will make less errors. And the errors that you do inevitably make will be obvious to the grader, and the grader will be able to say, ah, well, I can see that student made error, made an error, but it's obvious what they did, and it's not fundamental. <coughs> so you get most of the credit. Okay, good. So that's my, that's my instructor's plea to you. <laughs> uh, any questions about this one? <coughs> So next page. Uh, so now we need a bit of jargon. Uh, so the expressions <coughs> a plus b and A minus B are said to be blank to each other. So who knows the word that goes in the blank? Fishing for a C word. Correlated, that's, that is a C word, but that's not the C word I'm looking for. Starts with C. That's getting closer, but that's not right. Start, second letter is O. Conjugate. Said to be conjugate to each other. So they're said to be conjugate to each other. So conjugate, the word conjugate literally means complementary and fitting together. So a lock and a key are conjugate to each other. Okay, similarly, if you like biology, for example, there are molecules in every living thing called enzymes, and the purpose is to speed up chemical reactions. So the way chemical reactions actually work is you have to get two molecules, 
in close proximity to each other and in the right orientation with respect to each other. So they not just close, but rotated in three-dimensional space so that they, their electron orbitals overlap in the right way. So all that an enzyme is, is you take two, two molecules at least. <coughs> Molecule A fits in one spot in the enzyme. Molecule B fits in the other spot in the enzyme. And then the enzyme is activated and it puts them together, right? Mm -hmm. Like a parent saying, you two hug, right? <laughs> Do it. <laughs> okay, that's what an enzyme is. So the molecules in the enzyme are, are, are conjugate to each other. They fit together. Okay. Even if you take biology, when they talk about enzymes, they'll usually say something about locks and keys. So, that being said, we have another proposition. This is called the product of conjugates formula. So specifically, A plus B multiplied by A minus B. We want a formula for this. Incidentally, does anyone care to hazard a guess why this is called the product of conjugates formula? Because we're multiplying conjugates? <laughs> yeah, and mathematicians are notoriously literal. <laughs> okay. I mean, they're not engineers. <laughs> Okay, so product of conjugates. The formula does look like the previous two formulas a little bit. So there's an A squared and there's a B squared. Okay, but now it's going to be minus A squared minus B squared. Because in height. And I hope that you're wondering, well, the previous two formulas had a 2AB in them. Right? It was either plus or minus, depending on the formula. Where's the 2AB for this one? Well, I heard someone say it. What is it? It's canceled, it's canceled right? Because if you were to FOIL this out, what is the outside term? <laughs> negative AB. And what is the inside term? Positive AB. What's negative AB plus positive AB? Zero. That's why that term is not present. Okay, so this is called the product of conjugates. So let's do one. Uh, how about um, x uh, plus 8 multiplied by x minus 8. So what do you think? X squared. <laughs> See, that's what I do, right? I was starting to write, I, was set, I said x squared, but I was thinking 64. So I started to do that. That's, that's my typical error. Okay, so x squared minus 64. Okay, so no, no surprises there, I think, I hope. Okay, how about how about um, uh, 10p plus uh, 7q multiplied by 10p minus 7q? Yes? You have the answer? Okay, what do you have? 100 what? 100p squared minus 49q squared. Or, uh, p squared minus 49q squared. Good. Any questions about this one? Okay, now, just a little bit of extra jargon here is that this expression right here, this expression right here is called a difference, difference 
of squares. So anyone care to hazard a guess why it's called the difference of squares? Right. This is a squared, and that's b squared, and we're subtracting them. So here's a phrase that I will say <coughs> starting today and most days <laughs> from now on in this class is that the product of conjugates is the difference of squares. Product of conjugates is the difference of squares. I'll be saying it a lot. And repetition, in, te in teaching something and, and in memorizing something, repetition is, is one of the key elements, so I'm going to say it one more time. <laughs> Product of conjugates is the difference of squares. <laughs> so any question about this? So we've learned how to, we've learned four formulas. FOIL, <coughs> the, the square of a binomial when it's a plus b, the square of a binomial when it's a minus b, and the product of conjugates. Okay. Now what we're going to learn is how to do it, do this in the reverse order. Okay, so what is it called when you're doing this in the reverse order? Factoring. Factoring. <coughs> so this is the subject of section 1.5. It's called something like factoring. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, we're going to start out with an example. <clears throat> okay, so how about um, six x cubed y cubed? plus 45 x squared y squared uh, plus uh, let's think about this 63 no that's not what I want what am I saying what, 45 is what is Six times what? Nine. Nothing. That's, that's not right, is it? I don't want this to be 45. I don't like this. I don't like this example that the book has. So I'm trying to make one up, and I'm stumbling as I do so. Okay, let's make this 24, and let's make this one 60. Okay, and then we'll make this uh, x y squared. Okay, good. Terrific. So now. <coughs> I've given you an expression. Uh, how many terms are in it? Three, three terms. Okay, three terms. And then now, considering just the first term, so terms are things that are separated by pluses and minuses. Things that are separated by, by product, what are these individual pieces called? They're not called terms. What are they called? Factors. Factors. So each one of these terms, these three terms, consists of a number of factors. So what we're going to do is we want to find what's common among all of them. And we want to, we want to factor it out. And this is called finding the greatest common factor. So I'm going to do this example in probably the slowest and most excruciating way you have ever seen. <coughs> and it's only to make the point clear, and then you, you don't have to do it this way. But I want to make, I want to make the point very clear about what's going on. Okay, so you, I'm going to start out with one piece at a time. Notice that there are constants, coefficients, 6, 24, and 60. There are x's, x cubed, x squared, and x, and there are y's, y cubed, y squared, and y squared. So I'm going to focus just on the constants. And the, the first thing I'd like to point out, and I I expect someone to say something, but, but I'm going to say, I noticed that 2 goes into all of them. So I'm going to factor it out. So what I mean is that I should be able to write 2 times something. <laughs> ha 
almost every one of you is giving me a furled brow saying, why didn't you do six? You're not saying it, but it's in there, I'm sure. I'm doing two for some reason. So what I'm saying is that I could factor out a two, I could factor out a two, uh, and then there's something I can write in these parentheses to make this expression right. Okay, and I'm gonna leave that blank so that if you read the notes you can remember I asked. So just what, what do I need to put in here so that factoring out that two is right? 3x cubed, y cubed, yes. What's the next term? 12x squared, y squared. Good, 12x squared, y squared. What's the next term? 30x, y squared. So why is this correct? Why is this, why is this a logically correct step? Well, so le let, me let me ask it in this way. How do we know that this term is right? How do we know this one is right? Yeah, because if you were to multiply it back out, you'd, you'd get 6x cubed, y cubed. Okay. So we factored out a 2. Now the question is, is well, can we factor out anything else? So we can, can we factor out any other constants? Yes. Oh, what else can we factor out? 3. 3. What would have been faster? 6 to just factor out six in the first place. Okay, so I'm, I'm glad that almost to a person all of you saw that. Okay, so we're gonna factor out a two and also a three now. Okay, terrific. So that means that there's something that we could write in these parentheses that would make it right. So I'm gonna combine that two and the three and make it a six. And my question is, is what goes in these parentheses now? Okay, good. X cubed, Y cubed, and then what? Plus how much? 4X. 4X squared, Y squared. And then what? Uh, 10X, Y squared. Good. Terrific. So now are there any further constants that can be factored out? <clears throat> no, right? They don't, there's no more integer factors that all of the coefficients have in common. So nothing further can be factored out. So we're done with the constants. Let's do the x's. So notice that every term has, has some power of x in it. So we want to factor out some power of x. So the way that you make this determination is you consider all terms and you, you can factor out, the lo among all the terms, the lowest power. So what the lowest degree. So what is the degree of x here? Three, Three the degree here? Two, Two the degree here? One. One. So how much x can we, can we factor out? One. One. So specifically what I'm saying is that it is possible to write this is 6x times something. 6x times something. Okay, so then 6x what can I put in um, the parentheses to make it right? So, so x squared and then what? y cubed and then plus now how much? 4x four four x, y squared plus 10y squared. And so now have a look inside of the parentheses. Now what is the lowest the lowest degree of x among all terms? Zero, right? So you can't, you can factor out no more x's. No more x's can come out to play. Okay, so then you can't factor out any more constants. You can't factor out any more x's. Now what? Y's. Now y's. <laughs> so, among the terms, you can factor out, you, you consider the degree of each y, and you factor out the lowest of all degrees. What's the degree of this one? Three. This one? Two. This one? Two. Okay, so among three, two, and two, what is lowest? Two. Two. So that means that it is possible to write, to pull out y squared, and then write that this is equal to six xy squared multiplied by something. So then six xy squared and then what goes in the parentheses? So what is it? x squared, y, and then what? 
plus 4x plus 10. So like I said, slow and excruciating. But I hope the point is made. So most, when you've done enough of these, most students can jump to the last. And that's fine for your homework. Okay, so this is called this thing right here. Notice that no more constants, no more x's, no more y's can come out. So this two is called a common factor. Two times, uh, so two times three is also a common factor. Two times three times x is also a common factor. Two times three times x times y squared is also a common factor. And there's nothing else that can come out. So what is this one called? The greatest common factor. Now, yes? <coughs> Why can we not take one more x out? Because you, you could take up to two x's from this one, because it has two to give. You could take up to one x from this one, because it has one to give. How many x's does this one have to give? None. None. So it has to be in each term to take it out? Yes. Okay. It has to be common to every term. Good. Have a nice Wednesday.